Who doesn't love a good action movie where our hero is thrown so many challenges to sort through? And when it looks as if it's all over, at the 11th hour, our hero prevails. Hmm. It's not that easy though in real life. We at RFM have been embarking on a short series where we deal with some of the issues that affect our daily lives. We are familiar to some of you, but for those newcomers, welcome. We are Rama Fellowship Ministries, located at number one Sawmill Avenue in Barataria. If you want to know a little more about us, you can check out our website or our Facebook page at www.ramafellowship.org. Hi, I'm Kamika Morris, and thanks for joining us. This is RFM and you. On this edition, we'll spotlight a ministry that doesn't get the limelight as much, but performs a very needful role. We at Rama call it care and support. We'll also venture into dance, this phenomenon that has become a staple in many gospel churches. But first, we want to delve into the issue of sin. It's a topic that often makes us uncomfortable. Today, I have with me an associate pastor and Bible school teacher who can help shed some light on the topic. Welcome, Pastor Niles, to RFM and you. Thank you very much. It's a joy to be here. I'll start with the genesis of the question, how did sin come about? Well, to my mind, uh, it began with the angel Lucifer in the heavens. Now, God had made Lucifer for a special purpose, and he was fitted with beauty and royalty and pipes and so on in his being for the glory of God. And the time came when, because he would have observed the praise and the worship and the many things that the, the Lord himself would be given, as worship, he came to feel that he wanted to be like God. So he said to himself, I will exalt my throne above the throne of God. And for that, he was cast out of heaven along with the angels that supported his coup, so to speak. And that's where it all began. And then, having come upon the earth, he sought to afflict God's prized possession, mankind, whom God had made. And he thought that he would get after man because he couldn't get after God. So Adam and Eve, who we understand were the first people made, fell into sin because he tempted them and this is where it all began. Many people know that something is wrong. They know that an action has a particular consequence, but yet still people commit sin. Why do you think they do that? Sin is inherent in man's nature. And it is something that it is like a dog will bark because it's a dog. It doesn't, it does not, it is not a dog because it barks. <laughs> it barks because it's a dog. And man sins because of the nature of sin in the man. In other words, he just cannot help himself. It is inherent in his nature. So it is normal and natural for a man to sin. That's the general basic idea of sin. 
so you really can't help yourself. But sin is one thing, but there, there may be habits or addictions or strongholds that provide even a greater challenge for someone to overcome. And those may be a little too much for an individual. What do they do then? That's where Jesus Christ comes in. And we have to give thanks for the coming of Christ into man's space. The Bible says, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. And we thank God for his grace. And the sinner can be saved by the grace of God. And the Bible lets us know that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And I can testify as one who has received that grace, knowing that I came from a place where sin had me bound, and now I am free, I am delivered, I am set free. That, that yoke is destroyed. So the possibility of a man being delivered from sin is real. I am the living proof of it. So you're saying that a person who may be addicted to drugs or addicted to pornography and they might try so many times to stop, the only way they can really stop is through Jesus, through his grace. Yes, because I had that problem myself. I remember that I would throw my marijuana away, pelt it through the window, wanting to be free from it, and go back to it the next day. But it is when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior more than 30 years ago, I am completely free, never had the desire to go back to it again. So it was an instantaneous? Yes. The answer is Christ. We have been talking about sin and where sin began, but what really, Pastor is sin? Well, from the scripture, it says that sin is the transgression of God's law. And God has laid down guidelines in his word, letting us know the things that he objects to. For example, in the Old Testament, we had the commandments where God said, thou shalt not kill and thou shalt not steal, etc. And all of that applies today. And those things remain as the law of God. So this is what sets the principle for a man to know whether he has committed a sin, yea or nay. Okay, sin is the transgression of the law. Is it possible? Can I live a life without transgressing God's law? Can I live a life without sin? Yes, the answer is yes. Because there's love for God in the heart of a man. Why would he want to transgress the law of God? He said, you see, for God said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So the heart that is full of love towards God would not want to do anything that would transgress God's law. So God can help somebody if you really desire to live a life without sin. God can, the Holy Spirit, I believe, will be able to empower that person. Well, of course, this is how it is done. You cannot live the sinless life on your own. God gives you, he empowers you by the Holy Spirit to live above sin. And Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He empowers me. He gives me the ability to rise above it. So when the, 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 the inclination comes to sin, the Holy Spirit rises up inside of me and lets me know, no, this is wrong. Do not do that. So it's a matter of choice, really. Interesting. And I aspire to live a life, really, without sin, one that is sinless, and I will continue to try my best. You can. 
And thank you so much, Pastor Niles, for your contribution today. It has been a joy for me. Thank you very much. Hope many of you have gotten some answers, and I pray that today can be a new beginning for you. Next, care and support. Stick around. You love your car. You need your car. And you need to protect your investment. We can help at REO Consultants Limited. We do GPS tracking alarms, reverse cameras, and we have you covered with some cool gadgets too. So call us at 682-5276 or check out our website at reoautott.com. Thinking about that new kitchen? Then Kevel's Woodworking is the one for you. We do big kitchens, small kitchens, matte or gloss finishes. We have you covered. And that's not all. From chest of drawers to cabinets, doors, beds, and more, we can make it happen. You say it, we build it. Customized. Kevel's Woodworking Services at 469-8532 or 338-4154. You want to buy that gift for someone special, but you're not sure exactly what. Then visit us at Eagles Variety Store. We have perfume sets, trinkets, toys, and more as we cater for the entire family. So check us out on the Eastern Main Road Barataria, near 6th Avenue, or call us at 787-8358. Right now, I have with me a pillar in the ministry who goes beyond when it comes to service. She is, however, charged with the ministry of care and support. So what is it really? Sister Wendy Ramdan joins me now. Sister Wendy, glad to have you. Glad to be here, Kimmy. What is care and support? Care and support is uh, an arm of the social ministries of Rima, and we give care to all the members of the ministry. It is geared to giving care to all our members. We identify what need there is, be it social, spiritual, or otherwise, and we give that care and support as needed. We are committed to doing that so that no member of our ministry feels any lack. So, you know, we have an equal sense of equality, a biblical sense of equality. That, in, in a nutshell, is care and support. Walk us through a day in terms of how the visits pan out. Okay, prior to our visits, we always make phone calls, a few phone calls as to who we are going to visit. So it's usually elderly or sick or what sort? Well, we go, we have our home-based members, we visit our home-based members, we visit those who may be ill, those who are in hospitals, we visit members who we miss, we observe that we miss them for a while, we may for make our phone calls and we go. We there being other members of the care and support team. How long have you been doing this and what have you gained from interacting with the seniors? Okay, me I've been doing care and support for 10 years. Wow. Since 19, excuse me, 2007. So right now I am in my 11th year. And I have gained so much interacting with the seniors. I learn from them how to treat with them. I learn how to treat with other people, how to deal with my husband or my children. Most of all, I learn how to take God at his word, how to trust him. Don't give up, hold on to his word. So you find that, you know, many people have these myths about seniors that they are miserable and stuff. Do you share that same sentiment? Not altogether. Some of them are miserable like anybody else. They have their moments like all of us. But as long as you get to know them, you get to know the miserable ones and you, you deal with them, you treat with them, you know their likes and dislikes, you, you know what to expect when you go by them. So after you interact with them for a little while, you know what sister A or brother B 
likes, his wants, dislikes. So you know you have no problem interacting with them. You have no problem sorting them out, dealing with them, treating with them. Is there any other ministry that you are involved in? Well, as um, being a woman in Rima, I'm involved in WOW and being uh, the leader of care and support. I'm also involved in the other social arm ministries, Atlic Hospitality, because we work hand in hand. So I'm involved in those ministries. You gave your life to the Lord in 1977 and have been in ministry for almost four decades. So how have you seen ministry evolved over that period? Oh, it has evolved over that time, Kimi. When I got saved and you hear the word ministry, you think about pastors <coughs> excuse, and the evangelists. And as the years roll on, you start hearing about the apostles and the prophets. And between, somewhere between there, you realize that as long as you are doing something for the Lord, you are a minister. So you won't necessarily involve in ministry like being um, pastors or prophets or teachers, but as long as you did something, you serve in any capacity, you are a minister. But we haven't evolved, but sadly to say, uh, a bit of um, commitment. We have commitment issues. We, we seem to be lacking a bit in that area. Having that, uh, you know, passion for what we do. I'm not seeing it now as I saw it when I first got saved. It seems like so many people are working and work and studies seem to always be an excuse for ministry. Yes, yes. Um, <clears throat> but thinking back down, we always had... Uh, reasons we always had family we always had studies we always had other extracurricular activities but the lord was always first those things never took priority over what we had to do for the lord do you want to give us a sneak peek into what's next for you in ministry what next for me most likely would be continuing care and support or wherever the lord will have me to function um I would really like to see care and support, if I'm still involved in it, if I'm still heading care and support, go beyond just the, the team of us functioning in care and support. I would like to see each member come to the realization that each of us, we have to care, each one is supposed to care for the other. I want to see a greater involvement with our young people, other, the, the other ministries come on board because right now um, they think it's just, I get the feeling I should say that it's just the care and support ministry, but I would like to see care and support spread throughout the, our ministry here in Rima that each one has that sense that I have to take care of my brother, I have to take care of my sister, I have to give that care and support when needed. So would you need a bigger team or is it, does it feel burden, burdensome as it's a small team or how is it for you? Somewhat, um, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't use the word burdensome. It could be challenging a bit, but it's not really burdensome because I, I have a great team working along with me and when there is need, I, I tend to pull from other members of the congregation. So it's not burdensome as such. Thank you, Sister Wendy, for giving us such an insight into care and support. Thank you, Kimi. The pleasure was all mine. When we come back, it's ministry in dance. Where are you going? Stick around. Looking for a pet bunny? How about a bird? Or are you a fish person? Visit us at Jenny's Pet Shop. We have pets for you or your little ones. It is often said that pets give us longer, happier lives. Why not find out? We are located at number 236 Eastern Main Road, Barataria. Call us at 
0809-8857. Don't throw out that chair. That dining table still has life. Trust us, we know. At Interscope Finishes, we will allow you to continue that emotional attachment to your antique piece by giving it a second lease on life. We can also bring new life to your beloved front door and more. Seeing is believing, so call us at 762-0588. The Twilight Years. They have served their families, their communities, and their country for decades. And now it's their time to be given that care that is due to them. At Doreen's Retirement Villa, we will see to it that our beloved seniors are given the best care possible. With a friendly, patient, and compassionate staff, we will provide that home away from home. So call us at 750-8300. 35 degrees Celsius, high humidity. I know you are thinking about installing an air-conditioned unit, but you feel it may be a little out of reach for you. Think again. At North Pole Cooling, we provide you with cost-cutting energy-efficient units coupled with prompt and professional installation. I'm a cool dude, and you can be too. So give us a call at 755-8638. That was Dance with Fire 2 in September 2015. Is dance a new phenomenon in churches? Well, maybe not. We have seen in churches the introduction and the growth of dance ministry. But what is it really? To give us a little backstory, I have with me an enthusiastic dance instructor who has been in dance for a number of years. Simone Maxine joins me now. Welcome, Simone. You are no stranger to any of us. Hello. Hi, Kimmy. Thank you for having me on the show. Okay. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I started dancing at the age of probably later. I would say probably 18 years old because I came in church at 16. And that's when I got saved and stuff like that. And um, from that time to now, I've just been involved in the dance. Well, I do have an 8 to 4 job and... Um, basically, after four until probably eight, after eight, I dance in the afternoon. I teach dance, I have a dance academy. So, basically, outside of work, it's dance. It's dance. So, dance. so you said you started dance at 18 years or so, right? But how, do you, how did you get into it? Okay, so basically, um, when I first came to Raymond Fellowship Ministries, I saw the dance ministry here and Honestly, the ministry really touched me. And I mean, being an introverted, shy person, I just never thought I would have been in their place, you know, at one point. But there was this, every Sunday morning as a rule, I would see myself around five o'clock in my sleep. I knew it was visions because it would happen at a specific time and I would see the same thing all the time and I would be in white dancing, the most graceful movements you would ever see. But I didn't know how to look like that, but I saw myself dancing. That was even before you started Before dance. I started to dance, yes. And when I joined the dance ministry in church, it stopped. So I realized then that God was calling me to dance. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So basically, when I joined the dance ministry in church, the vision stopped and... From that time to now, I've seen such a progression. I've seen the hand of God. I've seen, that's what I'm saying, at the end of the day, everything that I'm doing now is for his honor and for his glory because he is the one who called me to do it. And being such an introverted and shy person, it pushed me beyond my limits and beyond my bar to minister to someone and be able to make eye contact with them and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Simone, I have seen a number of your pieces on different places. I often wonder, how does a routine come about? 
Okay, so basically, I depend on Holy Spirit to show me, firstly, what He would have me to do. Secondly, I also, like if I hear the song, that song is being played, and it's almost as if I zone out, because I'm seeing steps already being put in place with the, with the choreography, and choreography coming to life. Um, and thirdly, I literally, sometimes I don't listen to the song. I just literally pull from steps that I have and would put, put steps in between, like all, you know, just around and then put it to music. And my students would be like, how oh, you just do that and get it to fit so good? I say, well, I don't know, it has just happened. <laughs> you know, and I think God, you know, his hand, is, his hand is in it all, no matter what. So I'm saying those three basically are what. So how long does it really take? from to execute a piece? Um, I would say it depends on the dancer, their technical ability, their, their level of um, technique they may have. If it's, you have a really you know, flexible dancer you, or a dancer who can move and understand what you're saying, then fine, that probably will take a day or two in choreography. But if you have a group of dancers who are not technically trained and they have the, the, you know, the desire is there, and they're willing to work, it might take a little longer. But once you know, you're willing and once you have the desire, I am... So in your mind, in terms of developing your routine, when you, from the time you hear that song, does it take you a week meditating on the song? Is it something you do in one day, one, one night? night? Hmm. In the earlies, it was so, like, but from, because I do so much more now, and it's really demanding, um, because I, it's not that I'm doing just in Rhema, but you know, I've done work with other churches yes. as well, and that required me to push the bar up a bit. So, and now that I have a school, I choreograph a lot of the pieces in the school as well. There are other dance teachers too as well who do choreography, but most times I, it's always a quick. Quick yeah. as being a day? A day, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's interesting, that's really quick. It's quite common to see dance ministry in many churches, but that wasn't always the case. Take us back a little and carry us through the progression as you have seen it. Um, when I first came to Rima Fellowship Ministries, I, the, the dance was already unfolding in the churches and the progression from that time to now is just that it have a lot more dance ministries in churches um, people are understanding, yes, David danced before the Lord, yes, Miriam took the tambourine and she danced before the Lord when they had the victory, you know, and stuff like that. So people are understanding dance, but still there are churches who are yet to accept it in their church and stuff like that. So um, the progression has been there, it just, not ha it just not have not been in all churches. I have also noticed Yes, more churches have really taken up dance, but I believe that the level of technique and expertise that is presented, it has really improved over the yes. past couple of years. Yes. It has improved over the past couple of years. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I used to do um, when I had a lot of time was that when we had Dance With Fire, I would specifically go to the different churches, work with each of their dance group, and teach them technical training. And that was a number of hours as well as choreograph. So whatever I learned or whatever I was taught, I took and I gave out to all the different churches. Once they were willing to accept me, I went to the churches and I worked with them and stuff like that. So yes, uh, there has been a progression. There has been a improvement as well in the dances. Um, but as the level of, uh, like some, some churches, you know, they still, as, I still must say that there's some churches, even though they have improved a lot in their technical training, the, it depends because you might not be able to lift your leg that high or you might not be able to wear a specific type of clothing. So they have their restrictions within a church setting. But once you go to like the little Carib Theater or Napa National Academy for Performing Arts, or if you go to Sapa, they, you know, you, you, you there's a little less, you know, they could actually taper the excess amount of clothes that you would use to do ministry. So, so what I'm trying to say is that sometimes, based on the, the culture of the church, it's, you would get a specific something coming from the stage as opposed to if you go in a performing arts 
studio like Napa, you can actually still get ministry, but you have, you can actually go now to actually use a costume that would really bring it to life. You know, so sometimes it depends on the culture of the church as well. I know you teach dance and you are the director of your own school, as you have already mentioned, as well as the director here at Rhema Fellowship Ministry. So tell us how things came about and what is currently taking place. Um, well, right now we are preparing for Dance with Fire 2017. Um, being the dance director in Rima Fellowship Ministries, it's only probably about three to four months. Um, there's a lot of dancers who are interested from Rima to be a part of the ministry. We have different age brackets and so we have the, the kids, we have the teens, we have the adults and we also have the 50 plus, you know, so we have a age bracket for everybody who wants to be a part of dance. Um, they have all enrolled in my school to better their technical training. Pastor has agreed on that and stuff. And they're all really working hard towards it. Every, every single one of them from four all the way to 50 plus. Um, so we're right now basically choreographing for Dance with Fire 2017. That's this year in September. Our time is almost up, but before we go, tell us where do you see dance going? Where I would like to see dance go is when a dancer enters on stage, she's so filled with the Holy Spirit that people look past what she's wearing, look past the tights or look past it, but be able to see ministry coming forth from her. And not just ministry, but the anointing of God. And that's, that's exactly where I would like to see it go, you know. I know you mentioned, and many people are wondering about Dance With Fire. So there is Dance With Fire in 2017. Yes. I know from what you have said so far that Rima is taking part in it. Can you tell us anything else more about yes. it? So far, we have uh, approximately eight to nine groups interested. They're actually not just interested, but they have enrolled to be a part with Dance With Fire 2017, which is going to be held at the Little Carib Theatre on September 30th and October 1st, 2017. So basically we have churches like St. James Pentecostal Church, we have Four Roots Pentecostal, we have Faith Assembly, uh, Shiloh Pentecostal, West End. So we have a good number of churches participating this year. This is actually the first year we have a larger, when I said, like before we had like six churches, before we had like seven, but now we have nine. Okay. So it's, it has it's grown, largest. it's the largest, yes. So basically each church is going to be dancing on either Saturday or Sunday. So we are working towards getting Dance With Fire up and going for this year. Where will it be taking place this year? It will be held at the Little Carib Theatre. Thank you, Simone, for joining us and taking us through this brief journey into dance. Thank you. If you or someone you may know may be interested in getting into dance ministry, you can call Simone at 369-5536 or email her at simonemaxshine at gmail.com. You are probably feeling to twirl right now. Go ahead, you have one minute. We'll be right back. Dance is movement. Movement is life. Life is an expression. Expression is the opportunity to unfold or worship unto God. Do you want to explore this expression of ministry? Well, come explore with us at Simone McShine Academy of Dance. We are located at number 2 to 4 Eastern Main Road in Pittsburgh. Yes, there's room for you. So call us at 498-9356. Steve Specialist Plumbing Limited. We specialize in residential, commercial, and institutional plumbing. As licensed plumbers, we do isometric drawings and sewer connection with WASA approval. With over 30 years' experience, let us handle all your plumbing needs from foundation to finish. Give us a call at 758-0028 or 339-8921. You know you want to transform your space into something special and give it that signature look. Let us help you. Earl T. Edwards & Associates have been specializing in woodwork and interior decor since 1980. 
we work with our clients to get that perfect balance between style and functionality in the shortest possible time. So give us a call at 675-7426 or 760-2545. We are ready when you are. What's your favorite color? That's all you have to worry about. At JN Enterprise, we tackle various painting projects from homes to offices, buildings to churches. We work with our clients to see their dreams fulfilled with solid advice and we take pride in their satisfaction. Give us a call at 772-9491. We engage in a lot of discussion today with our guests. But if you have any queries or want some assistance, you can contact the office here at Rama Fellowship Ministries at 675-1679 weekdays during the hours of 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. I want to thank my guests for their contribution and you for your company today. We trust that we have been a blessing. I am Kimika Morris, and this was RFM and You. On behalf of the entire team, God bless and see you soon.